got the 2015 Jeep Cherokee Limited up on the rack here. And today we have got to change out the wheel bearing and the shock uh, in this back corner. I'm actually going to do all four corners. It's, the truck's got almost 160,000 miles on it and they're all making some form of noise. Uh, so I ordered up all brand new parts and we're going to put them in. You can see how I've got the Jeep up on my Ben Pack lift here. Um, these, this is new to the channel. Uh, I have a, this is a Ben Pack uh, HD9 XW. So it's the extended width high height lift. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it. And you can see I've got my Ben Pack quick jacks that have lifted the Jeep up off the uh, rack just a little bit. Um, I will eventually probably get a bridge jack and I'm still in the process of looking for a, uh, or purchasing a two post lift, which would solve some of this uh, issue here. Uh, ben Pack unofficially, officially supports doing this. They actually have an article on their web page, and there's been a couple of other YouTubers that have done this. Um, I don't really like it. I don't find it, I mean, it's stable, it's not going anywhere. Um, it just, I'm not really fond of the way it's, the truck is sitting on it, so. Um, we're gonna do one side at a time. I, like I said, I have all brand new parts here. Uh, I've got, these are Mevotech uh, end links here. I've got Monroe shocks and the good stuff, Timken uh, wheel bearings. These are like one of the best ones that you can buy. And uh, I have had really good luck with them over the years. Got my wheel lock here. Uh, these are 19 millimeter lug nuts. Um, we'll just bump them loose here with the lug nut socket. These do have a tendency to swell up. Uh, so sometimes your 19 millimeter socket can get stuck on there. Uh, if it does, I just have a rubber mallet. Yeah, that'll knock it loose. So that one's stuck on there. And you can use a breaker bar or there we go. So it pops right off. Pull our tire off here. And now we gotta start disassembling the brakes. Um, I just did these brakes last August, so um, the back ones here are still in pretty good shape. Shock's pretty, uh, pretty crusty. Um, I'm honestly surprised that they passed it for inspection here. Uh, but we got a brand new one we're gonna put in, and then, like I said, a brand new wheel bearing. Uh, so we'll have to get this axle nut off as well. This axle nut is roughly a 32. So I've got my impact socket here and my impact gun. There we go. Now to be fair on this corner, I have had, I've replaced the CV uh, uh, probably a couple of years ago because the boot ripped on it. So. That's probably why that came off relatively. Yeah, all right, that should come out pretty easily. Uh, so what we need to do is I gotta pull this bolt out here, uh, this Allen socket, and then we'll take the caliper off. Uh, I'll probably raise the vehicle up and get the, uh, the bottom nut on this shock out. We've gotta pull the wheel well liner out here so I can get to the top of the shock mount. Um, and then we can, the, the hard part's gonna be getting the wheel bearing itself out. We're gonna take this bolt out for the caliper. It's an H5. And get our 3 8 drive ratchet here. This should come out relatively easy. Like I said, I just replaced these last summer. If they got 5,000 miles on them, I'd be shocked. Maybe a little more than that. Less than 10. Definitely less than 10. So pull this off here, that over there so it doesn't get lost. And then we've got to find, I think these are 10s or 13s. And then you'll want a thin wrench like this to go in here to keep the slide pin from turning as you take it apart. So you want to take this bracket off here. That is a 10 millimeter. This is a hard line to the caliper, so you gotta be careful with that, that you don't break it. Put that aside. And 
Um, you actually, you know what, before you do this, I need to do the brake procedure so that it sucks the caliper all the way in. I got the brakes retracted. So now, basically, there's a setting in the dash uh, on the U-Connect that pulls the piston, the caliper piston, all the way in. Um, so now we can do that. And i going to get that out of the way. That can just gently get out of the way there. Um, actually, we're going to need a... 10 millimeter ratchet there, excuse me, a 10 millimeter uh, wrench or ratcheting wrench. Of course, the ratcheting wrench is unhappy for some reason. It's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? There we go. It's had some junk in it, I guess. way. Pull our bolt. I always put the other bolt on top of it. That way we know where it is. Same thing on the bottom. 10 millimeter. Break that loose. And there's our caliper loose. Um, you'll want to get a hook. These are just some OEM tool hooks I think I got off of Amazon. That there, start it away. There we go. And find a good spot to put that. I don't remember where I put this in the past, but you don't want to put tension on the lines. All right, damn it. All right. so it's just sitting in the frame rail there. Okay, now we've got to get the slide bracket off and the pads off here. Uh, these are behind here are Torx style uh, bolts. And those are T55s, so you'll need a half inch drive. Um, well, I bought a half inch drive. Most of them come in 3 8 And to torque these appropriately, you really need the bigger one. I'm gonna have to get the breaker bar on that. I think I did put a little Loctite on there because that's what comes on from the factory. crack loose. I'll come over here and do the same thing to this guy. All right. That should be cracked loose enough now where we can switch over to our half inch drive ratchet here. bolts Chrysler says you're supposed to replace them and I usually do replace them um, I don't know if I have any they were new when I did the calipers last summer so usually on my personal vehicle I'll use them once or twice and I just put a little bit of uh, Loctite on there it's never been a problem in 160,000 miles so and this is its Probably third brake job. I don't remember. Like I said, I put these on last last August. So there's one. 
move over to the top one and then the slide bracket, the pads and the rotor will come off and we can put those aside. And you probably should have left the, the bolt that holds the rotor on until we get the caliper and stuff off, but it's all right. There you go, there's that one. And there she is. So, and the concern is, so pretty much all four bearings on this truck are making noise. Um, I've had a driveline noise in this for some time. Um, definitely one in the front. Uh, when I had it in for inspection, um, they stated the back ones were making noise. And since this has just about 160,000 miles on it, it's all original. I'm just going through the entire thing. So I've already got the nut out here. Uh, we've got to get the lower shock bolt out. That is a 21 millimeter bolt. Actually, some good news is I can get to these four bolts for the wheel hub assembly without taking the rest of this apart. Like I said, this is already, for the axle's already free. Um, it is an E-Torx. Uh, so you can see it kind of looks like a, a Torx bit there, a reverse Torx bit. And it is an E16 is the size. Um, what I am gonna do, um, just so that we don't damage my dust shield here, I'm gonna pull that off. Um, that is held in with, uh, these are 10 millimeter bolts. It looks like there's four of them on here, just to put this, just to get this out of the way so that if I've got a wrench on this bearing here, which I'm hoping I don't, um, or this hub assembly, I'm hoping this will come right out. Uh, but you know, you never know. It's uh, been up in New England all its life and it's got almost 160,000 miles on it. So one never knows if it'll come apart or not and what level of difficulty uh, will occur when it does come apart. So, or to get it apart. That one already cracked loose. I've had this shield off before. Yes, that's right. This side came off uh, when I did the uh, the CD. So that's why, because I was seeing this Nemesis on there. Um, I did that years ago. Uh, I don't know how many. I have to go back and look. I did a video on it. Change in the CV. All right, so we'll put that aside. Looking at my all data subscription here, they want, Chrysler wants you to remove the wheel speed sensor and this brake bracket here before you pull the wheel bearing and hub assembly out. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, it's, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. And I guarantee you this is gonna be really fun to get out. So I'm hoping we don't break it. Actually, I've had that out before too because there's never seas on that. There we go, so that's what it looks like. We'll just dangle that off to the side. <coughs> May have to find another spot for this caliper. Yeah, just pull that bracket off there. Yep, there we go, all right. It's a hard line. Probably have to pull this out and pull the uh, brake hose out just to get this bracket out of the way. So this is how I'm doing it here. I've got a half inch uh, extension or uh, stubby with three eighths drive E16 socket. And I've cracked this top one loose here. And we're gonna try and do the bottom one. go. All right, that one's loose. And I couldn't get it with the, just using the 3 8 drive. So I, I had to kind of bump up to, I may have to put a slight extension on this too. Actually, I don't know if that'll fit in there. I'm expecting the side to go fairly straightforward because um, everything up until this point has been apart before. Not recently, but it has. Go is that one. It's cracked loose. So three of the four have been cracked loose enough where I should be able to use a ratchet. 
Now we've got to do this bottom one here. And this one's going to be the toughest of the four. switch over to the ratchet just because it's just a hair shorter than the breaker bar. this was not on the quick jacks, I'd probably put it up in the air more, but I'm not in love with the setup I got going on here, but I got to get this job done. All right, there's one, three more to go. Chrysler sure does love their red Loctite, that's for sure. switch over to my 3 8 and see if I can get that it's a little smaller Number two. All right, there's number three. One more to go. And then we'll see how easy it is to take this hub out. All right. I'm switching this over to the big one. The brake caliper line out of the way. number four. All right, so I've been working on trying to get this off. I've got a little bit of a gap here between the hub and the knuckle. What we want to do, and I've got, this is just PB Blaster. I've been soaking it in there. Um, as I get the crack bigger, um, I put a little more in. And what you want to do, I'm just using my little propane torch here. Um, you want to heat up the aluminum knuckle just a little bit um, because it will expand and will allow you to work the uh, hub assembly back and forth. So I'm just kind of heating it up. I'm going from one side to the other, and then I'll stop. I'll tap it with my hammer a bit and work it back and forth. And that's really the only way you're going to get uh, one of these out. Now, they do make other tools that I don't own right at the moment that will, uh, you know, you can put a sledgehammer and stuff on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, like I said, I don't own one. and I don't really want to get that aggressive with it. And my arm is probably blocking the camera. You just want to, you just want to heat up the uh, the knuckle just a little bit because it'll expand, and then we'll it'll let the uh, as you work it back and forth, it'll break the dirt and debris free, and the pub should pop out.
<coughs> you don't want to heat the hub up because you don't want the hub to expand or the bearing to expand. You want the, the knuckle itself to expand. And it didn't take much for me to get it to move last time. So we're going to take my hammer here. And you're going to walk it back and forth so I can see it moved already. You see that gap's getting bigger. All that garbage is falling out. I'm going to put something there so I don't damage my brand new lift if it falls. Let's get something to catch it there. All right. There we go. Now she's, might be a little warm to the touch, but there we go. So now this assembly is out when it cools. Oh yeah, that's definitely noisy. I can feel that in there. All right, so the next step here is we've got to clean up this hub. Um, we've got to clean all the corrosion out of here and so that it's got a nice flush mating surface when we put the brand new hub assembly back in. Then uh, we can do the shock and put all this back together and this corner will be done and we can move on to the other corner. I'm gonna knock all the loose stuff off first. Now we've got to clean inside, which that's going to be another. Stuff all dirty there. Let's wipe that down. Because you want the bearing to sit, for the hub assembly to sit flat against the knuckle. There's definitely a lot of pitting on this. Like I said, it's got almost 160,000 miles on it, and it's a 2015. It's been in New England its entire life. So snow, salt, all sorts of stuff. Not surprised. So inside, I'm just probably going to get a little pick and kind of knock any of the loose stuff off. And I might take my, I got a little brush here, and just, again, knock any of the loose stuff off so that the bearing sits in there, the hub assembly sits in there nice and flush and there's nothing to bind it on. Inner and outer uh, part of the knuckle cleaned up. Um, all I did was kind of take a combination of my Dremel with a little gritty pad there, cleaned everything up so it's nice and smooth. There's no more ridge on there from all the corrosion. I uh, got the mating surface all here cleaned up, cleaned it with a little brake clean. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white grease in here just to help the bearing go in. Doesn't have to be a lot and it'll help with corrosion later on. Um, you can use Never Seize or uh, white grease. Much smoother than the other one. The other one's binding up. And see the, what failed on the other one is this uh, rubber ring here and it kind of let dirt and moisture and stuff get in there. I, I believe that's why that failed. Uh, so we've got this brand new one that's gonna go on here and should go on. There we go. Just like that. All right, so we'll have to tap it into place. Probably suck it down with the impact gun and the, the nut on it too. Yeah, just walk it back and forth. Okay, did get our bolts nice and clean. Got most of the Loctite off. 
We're gonna put a little bit of red Loctite back on the bolts, roughly in the same spot that the factory had it. Pulling that hub assembly back in. Okay. All right. Get the next one. Let's switch over to my three eighths there. Now that hub is in, I got these two bolts in. <clears throat> so I'll clean up my mess here a little bit. We'll do the next one. There we go. And then I'll have to go look up the torque specs for everything. And last one. So this will be the last bolt. Um, I'll go look up the torque specs. We'll torque everything down and we'll start reassembling uh, everything. This went a little easier than I expected it, I guess. Like I said, I've had everything on this side apart aside from this uh, having the four bolts for the hub out and the hub itself out. There we go. All right. These bolts are need to be torqued to 70 foot-pounds according to the service manual which is not really super tight. I got the hub tightened down to 70 foot-pounds per uh, each of the four bolts. Uh, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the dust shield back on. So those are our 10 millimeter bolts here. Uh, goes on like that. And then once I do that, we'll put the rotor back on and the caliper. Um, and once I have this uh, corner back together here, we'll move on to the shock absorber. And then this corner shall be done. So it wasn't really that hard to do this. Uh, like I said, this, is, this corner came apart pretty straightforward. The other corner is the same exact spot. So for this video, we're doing this corner. Uh, I'll have another video coming out on doing the front suspension because there's more involved there that I'm going to do. Um, this, uh, what sucks about this truck, and I'll show you underneath here in a second, uh, you cannot get sway bar bushings for front or rear uh, unless you want to use a universal aftermarket one. Uh, the factory, you cannot get factory replacement or even aftermarket replacement from like Moog or Dorman or anything. Um, they're actually part of the sway bar from what I can tell. So you have to replace the entire sway bar, which is pretty silly. Uh, so normally I'd be doing those bushings because they're pretty gross looking. Um, once I get this back together, um, we'll take a look at that too. Um, but uh, I also have end links, but again, I'll wait to do that when I change, probably when I change the sway bar out because the bushings are pretty gross. So. All right, now we can 
find our bolt here that holds our caliper on. And we've got to get our caliper in place here. Ugh, fingers. I really dislike this style hub where you don't have the wheel studs and the studs are actually part of the lug nuts. I just don't find that to be, I just don't like it. All right, that's snug in there, so we can put that away. And I think while I have this bracket off here, let's see how these are sliding in here, if they're, no, they're good. So these bolts, same thing, I'm gonna go clean these up quickly on the grinder or the uh, wire wheel. Slap a little bit of Loctite on there, put those back in. So I got my bolts cleaned up on the wire wheel. Uh, like I said, we're just like we did with the uh, hub assembly, since this had some red Loctite on it from the factory. Um, we're just gonna put just a little bit on there. And I am gonna slide this back over the rotor here. Get this bolt started, and then we'll get the other one in. And I'll, I gotta go look up the torque spec and see what those are. I think they're like 130 or something, but I will look. Um, I'll put a lot of red Loctite on there because it would make it fun to get off later, but like I said, I'm, it's, I just put kind of what was on there from the factory. Yeah, so that it kind of stays the same. All right. I've got to put the wheel speed sensor back in too. Oh, good thing I can do that from the top here. Let me finish this up. And then we'll move back over to that because I goofed. These bolts are supposed to be torqued to 89 foot-pounds. So not much more than the hub assembly. So we're gonna set our wrench here, your our, our, uh, torque wrench. And then these are kind of fun to get to too because this torque wrench is so long. Someday maybe I'll get a different style torque wrench that would fit this application better, but that day is not today. Okay, there we go, there's 89 foot pounds. Move down here. This is substantially easier with the lift, that's for sure. There we go. All right, now we can slap the caliper back on. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna put our um, wheel speed sensor back in. There's our harness for the brake. Um, actually, there's our bracket. The other thing we cannot forget to do this clip for the brake line, it goes in. Of course, it's being a brat. Oh, this, this is my light right there. All right, hold that thought. And camera magic, we're already recharged. Just kidding, I have two of them. All right, so this brake line's being bratty. There we go. So we may need a little bit of 
persuasion on this. There we go. All right. Brake line clip is back in. Now the last piece over here is put the caliper on and do the shock absorber. Let's put our caliper in over here. bolt for the nut goes on top for the uh, brake line bracket. Get that started. The small, the short one goes underneath. Get that started. A 17 millimeter thin wrench and our 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. So these are typically only 32 foot pounds, which is pretty much just snug. My wrench doesn't go that low, unfortunately. So I just snug them pretty good. That's how I do it. Um, someday I'll get a, like I said, I'll get a wrench that does everything that I wanted to do and then some. These aren't very big bolts and you don't want to snap them, so. Snug. All right, we can put this bracket back on. Put the nut back in play and reconnect the um, motor, the electric uh, actuation motor. All right, there we go. Reconnect the motor. There you go. All right. Make sure everything's seated properly. We'll have to torque this down. I gotta look up that torque spec. All right, getting the shock absorber out is the next step. And what we need to do for that is I've gotta pull this 10 millimeter bolt. I believe these, these are probably eight millimeter bolts that have to get pulled. There's a 10 millimeter here. These two screws come out. There's a pin here, another bolt here. And it looks like there's maybe another eight millimeter here and a 10 millimeter here. So this will come out and then you'll have access to the shock mount above. And I've already cracked this 21 millimeter bolt loose down here. Uh, so we'll get that in and tighten everything up. I will tighten this guy up uh, after. I've got to get the brakes, uh, I got to take it out of service mode because uh, I need it to clamp the rotor so I can tighten this. This has to be tightened to 140 foot-pounds. So let's get these guys out of the way here. All right, there we go, that's started. And before we take this shock out, we'll have to put something under this knuckle to support it. Yep, drop my nut. Oh, there we go. 
I found my nut. This truck is a it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to work on. Um, it's this job is going a lot easier with the lift. Um, I did that CV on the ground in my dry, in my garage, in my other garage, um, a couple of years ago, and it was not a fun job to do. Um, one thing I'll say is having the right tools makes the job so much more easier. Something that I've learned as I've gotten older that the right tool, like I won't even, I will try not to touch a job, uh, you know, if I don't have the right tool for it or I can't obtain the tool for a reasonable cost. Um, I pretty much set up shop here to have, I mean, any tool you could ever want is in this shop at this point. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in the last year uh, putting this shop together. Let me go get some eight millimeter, an eight millimeter. Yeah, so I lied, it's not an eight millimeter, it's a seven millimeter. Chrysler does that on this for some reason. Um, yeah, I've spent a lot of money on tools this year um, to make sure I can support my own vehicles and then hopefully, uh, you know, any kind of ventures outside of my own vehicles and my own fleet. Um, pretty much what you see on this channel are my own vehicles, things that I've bought, collected, um, or, uh, you know, family members' vehicles. And now, <laughs> boy, <laughs> you want to make friends fast, buy a lift. <laughs> um, I've got a backlog of work that's got to get done on my own vehicles, never mind. I've got a couple of family members. i got a turbo coupe over there that needs a clutch. There's a Ram sitting in the drive. Uh, it's not showing up yet, but we'll be sitting in the driveway here probably sometime this week that needs brakes and a bumper and all sorts of odds and ends of things for another family member. And there's a Jetta sitting out there that belongs to another family member that is supposed to be signed over to me at some point. Ah, uh, see, they get you because this one's an eight millimeter. Buggers. Um, and I got that F-350 sitting outside too that I can't get to. <laughs> Um, but I've spent a lot of time and money on this shop this year. You know, we built the building and I bought this lift. I got another lift coming in this week. So I'll have my, I'll have a four post and a two post in the shop. And let me go grab my pliers here and get this pulled out. And so the last couple of pieces that I'm looking for are some tire machines. These guys are super helpful. Um, so the last piece that I'm really looking for is a set of tire machines, so a balancer and a mounting machine. Um, and then there's not gonna be much in the shop that I can't do. Uh, state inspections and alignments are pretty much, um, and probably some air conditioning work, uh, whether I'll branch that far out or not, I don't know. There we go. All right. <coughs> now, A little pressure on that and that should come off. That was done. Of course, this one I can't get behind. Uh, I don't think there's any other. And if I can just get this loosely out of the way. Yeah, see, that's what they did too. They got this plastic rivets in, in them and you can't reuse them. I broke the front ones when I did it. And this material is super thin that they make these wheel wells out of. just put a regular bolt like they did throughout the rest of it. 
here, but you know, thanks Chrysler. Let's see if I can just peel this back a little bit. So I think we can, I think we can get away without taking this whole assembly out or this whole piece out. Um, the bracket is up there. It's probably a two 15 millimeter bolts that hold it in. Let me figure that out and get some supports under this and then we'll get that shock changed. All right, so I just put a piece of wood in my bottle jack here just to catch it. Um, and it's not gonna go very far. Like I said, I already loosened up the, there's a 21 millimeter bolt on the back side here. I had already loosened it up a little bit when I was under there forking the wheel hub. And I've had this lower bolt off before when I did the CV, so not, Huge issue. All right, and these bolts up top are actually 16s. They're not 15s like I thought. Chrysler does that. They use some strange size bolts. <coughs> All right, there we go. There we go. So, again, never sees on it because I've taken this apart before. Uh, this piece up here has never been out. This is original. So we're just gonna peel that back a little bit and that is my 16. and use my impact for the long extension on it. Um, somebody will yell at me in the comments for using the chrome stuff, but that's what I got right at the moment. So I'll pull this out. There we go, this one. with my hands first, so cheated a little. Eh, well, there we go, gravity works. All right. So, now I gotta figure out how this comes apart, but you can see, yeah, it's pretty crusty looking. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's not terrible, but that's uh, definitely crusty. And like I said, I'm surprised they passed it and it's not leaking yet, but it will be soon. So I don't believe this bracket comes with the new pieces. So I think what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take this bracket off and put it on that. So that's gonna be the next challenge. All right, so 
we've got to reuse this top bracket and the bellows here. So I slid the bellows down. <clears throat> now, if this was a good shock or a good hydraulic ram, you would not want to take your vice grips like this. You'll damage the rod itself. Um, but because this shock is junk, I don't care. Um, it's a 17 millimeter so uh, nut on the top. So we're going to see if we can break it loose. Well, that was relatively uneventful. Now I did put a little heat to it off camera. So, all right. So I gave up the old shock. I just grind the top off of it. We're going to put some, uh, white grease on this, slide this back together and continue on just a little bit. Help it slide over this. I don't know why they did it this way and I don't know why they didn't include uh, a new bellows with the shock, but what do you want for, uh, I don't know, 18 or $20 shock, I guess. So a little white grease over that. Hopefully it slides down. Oh yeah, all right, there we go. It's gonna. There we go. That worked. Take my rag here. Just clean up any excess so it looks, not that anybody's gonna see it, but. Try and make it look, try and make your work look a little presentable. Um, if I had thought about it, I'd have ordered a new bellows, but I didn't realize until I opened this that it didn't come with another one. So, not a big deal. <coughs> um, put this on like this. And then our new nut is right here. It's the nylock. I'll put that on top there like so, and then we'll run it down. Oops. Eh, all right, to go back to the drawing board on that one. All right, so normally what I would do is I would just put a small wrench on the top of this, but once, and then use a wrench to tighten this down. Unfortunately, this nut sits resets in this bracket here. So I just, I got it right to it close to the end so it's not gonna go down into the shock anyway and ruin the seal. And then I just put a bunch of, a real thick rag around it so uh, it should not mar the rod. Normally you wouldn't do it that way. Okay, there we go, that worked. Nice clean. No marring or anything on the shaft and we're nice and tight. So now I can put this back in. Slide it around that. All right, I'm just threading these in with my hands. I gotta go look up the torque specs for these. But we'll get everything snug. All right, put our bolt back in down to the bottom here. All right, there we go, I had to. Uh, put a little pressure on the knuckles so that I could get the bolt lined up. So these top bolts are uh, 37 foot pounds. Uh, again, my torque wrench doesn't go that low. It's just really snug. It's not, not really anything crazy. Oops, I smacked myself in the face with a ratchet.
put our wheel well liner back in here. <coughs> All right, we can put our nuts and bolts back on here and then we'll go underneath and tighten the bottom one. So, because the bottom one's got to be at 137 foot pounds, I believe. I got to double check the side. I'm not going to bother to shoot the video for it because it's this exact same thing and there's just no reason to shoot it. So, um, that's how you change the wheel bearing and the shock on this side. Um, I'll do another video at a later date on the end links uh, when I get the sway bar in because uh, I've got to order that. And by rights, some of these bushings, they're a little torn, but they're not terrible. Um, I mean, at some point you got to call it and I'm just going after the key pieces here. Um, I've spent a lot of money on this truck this year, but vehicles are expensive, so um, not necessarily complaining, uh, but I did the radiator and the alternator and everything back in the spring. I don't think I shot video of that. That was a process, so. And I didn't have this building at the time, so, or the lift. I think I just gotta put that push pin back in and these bolts over here. Oh, and there's the random eight millimeter over there. that. Find my eight. Don't forget to torque this. I'll do that off camera once I get all the, get the other side back together but it's a hundred and like 140 foot pounds. Okay. All right, I just gotta get under there and torque that. Actually, I gotta put this pin in here. There we go. All right, so for all intents and purposes, this corner is back together, other than I've got to torque the axle nut and the bottom strut mount or shock mount. All right, so that lower shock mount bolt is 139 foot pounds that we've got to torque it to, and it is a 21 millimeter bolt. Um, so we're gonna use, crawl under here. Uh, I need an extension. <laughs> I probably use the longer extension on this because it hits the uh, Give me a better angle on it. There we go. All right. So that's how you change out the uh, hub assembly and the shock assembly or the shock absorber on a 2015 Jeep Cherokee in the rear end. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If it didn't, feel free to comment below. Um, I'm gonna continue on here, put this back together.